My name is Oram Miller. I'm a certified building biology environmental consultant, BBEC, based in Los Angeles, California, working with clients throughout Southern California and nationwide. Uh, I am trained uh, and have experience in the full range of building biology work, which is uh, looking at all the sources of toxicity in a home, including uh, outgassing from uh, building materials, uh, uh, mold, chemical outgassing, as I mentioned, uh, natural gas, lead, asbestos, radon, and electromagnetic fields, which is what I focus on now. And when you say you work nationwide, you can do that by telephone, I guess. How does that work? Uh, yes, about 15 to 20 percent of my clients uh, are people who I've never actually met face to face because they live outside of the state of California or outside of Southern California. And I work with them over the phone and through Skype and email over multiple uh, consultations. And they become my eyes and ears. They get the meters and instruments that um, uh, I recommend to them to take readings under my supervision. And then I uh, formulate a mitigation plan for the EMFs that we find that they can uh, take care of, as well as bringing in a tradesperson when necessary, an electrician or a plumber. And this is assuming that they don't have a building biologist in their local area. who Which I can, many people don't at this point. Well, yes, but the number's growing, fortunately, but there are many people who call me who don't have a building biologist nearby. That's true. Just want to mention that the opinions that I give are mine and don't represent the official uh, position of the building biology profession. Uh, those symptoms can include a whole range of, of different um, uh, things that happen to people. Headaches, uh, chronic fatigue, brain fog, you know, difficulty concentrating, uh, difficulty sleeping, uh, memory loss, uh, numbness and tingling, uh, ringing in the ears. These are all the classic symptoms of electrical hypersensitivity or sensitivity to some of the EMFs. So those things can be caused by a lot of things. How do I know that I've got an EMF problem? That's a good question. Uh, the answer is uh, uh, trial and error. In other words, noticing that when you're in the presence of some of these fields or uh, devices that are known to produce these fields, you feel worse. And then when you move away from them, you feel better. So, so I will have an instant feeling or, or relatively quickly when I'm exposed Many of the, well, that's, a good, that, that's also a good question. Most people uh, who are electrically hypersensitive do notice that these symptoms within minutes or even quicker than that. Others, it takes time for the symptoms to develop. Honestly, there are many people out there who don't know that they're sensitive to these fields uh, and mold and chemical uh, or sensitivity to uh, chemicals in a home, whether it's cleaning supplies or paint or uh, uh, any other sources of um, outgassing, can also have these same symptoms. So there is some cross uh, sensitivity to them. We, we just call it environmental sensitivity. Uh, and many of the people that we work with who are electrically hypersensitive, or EHS, are also multiple chemically sensitive, MCS. There's a lot of cross uh, sensitivity. And there are many people in the population who have various uh, nondescript uh, chronic ailments that they uh, that, that are not debilitating, they can still function, but they're there in the background that are from these devices. Uh, cell phones, these tablets, smart meters, uh, electric fields and magnetic fields in the home uh, that go undetected and they don't make this link, although they are seeing this link in other countries, the doctors are, but not here. So these people uh, don't know that they have uh, that as a source um, and their doctors don't know because nobody really talks about it here in this country. Right, so I might want to eliminate some chemical issues before I really zero in on the EMF to make sure that, like you say, there's no fresh paint or some, some kind of cleaning solvent or something going on. Right. Now, the people who do come to us, who find us, have researched this because there is information on the uh, Internet about uh, these sensitivities, both electrically and, and chemically uh, induced. The thing is, uh, these people just tackle all of it at once. And, and if they go to the websites for the building biologists, uh, the website for our profession is hbelc.org, uh, and my website is createhealthyhomes.com, then you can read about these uh, symptoms and what we do about them, uh, what we uh, identify in homes and how we mitigate that, uh, and see uh, and read about the experiences of other people who have these sensitivities, who have had one of us come and do an evaluation, or they've implemented these uh, recommendations on their own and they've noticed improvement. 
And if I'm able to, you know, say, oh my gosh, my Wi-Fi router might be hurting me, I shut it off, how soon would I see some improvement or notice that that's helping? Uh, many people who are electrical hypersensitive do notice an improvement within the first few minutes. For some, the ill effect that it creates lingers, and they may not notice improvement until the next day. It just depends on how sensitive they are. So give it a day or two, you know, clean up some things, give it a day or two and see how you feel before you're sure. Well, here's another way of looking at it. What I say to my clients is uh, we as building biologists cannot guarantee to any particular client that the work that we do in identifying and mitigating the elevated levels of electromagnetic field that we find will ameliorate or eliminate your symptoms. We can't make that claim because there could be a number of factors that cause the symptoms that the person has. What I have realized over the years that I can safely say to a client is the following. To the degree that their symptoms are due to the elevated levels of electromagnetic field that we find, and to the degree that the person can follow through on the recommendations that my profession teaches us to recommend to people to reduce and eliminate these fields, that is the degree to which they can expect improvement.